Hey everyone, this is John Buck. I'm back for another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, this video is going to show examples of the frequency response of second order systems and how they depend, uh, particularly for the underdamped case, how they depend on the choices of R and theta we saw. If you Again, if you haven't already watched the second order systems video, pause this one, go back and watch that one first, and then come back to this one uh, so that you understand what I'm talking about, because uh, it won't make a lot of sense if you haven't seen that one. Okay, but now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to my examples from MATLAB and show you how the different values of R and theta control the way the frequency response appears. So uh, for this example, I've, I've made sort of a three by three grid where each row is a different value of R. So the first row has R equal to a half, then R equal to three quarters, R equal to 0.9, uh, and then on the, each column is a different value of theta. So I have theta is pi over three, pi over two, and two pi over three. And so each of these three by three cells is a frequency response for a different second order system, right? So on the x-axis of each cell, I've got uh, the frequency going from minus pi to pi. Um, so this is the frequency axis in each case. And then the uh, vertical is the magnitude of h of e to the j omega. And so looking across the first row, what we see for a fixed value of r as I change theta is initially I have these two peaks that are close to pi over three. As theta goes to pi over two, and then 2 pi over 3, those peaks move to larger and larger values of frequency away from the origin. And in fact, the value of theta more or less tells you where they are, right? If I sort of did this looking down, I would see this came in at pi over 3, or a third on these axes. And as theta increases, right, I see the peak moves away from the origin. That's even clearer when r and these bigger values of r, as r moves closer to, to 1, I see the peaks are a little sharper, so it makes it even clearer that the peak value is moving away from zero, and so the peaks are at, at plus or minus theta. Roughly that. They're not absolutely perfectly exact mathematically, but in an engineering sense, they're good enough. They're, in, they're very close to that, depending on this. So again, what theta tells me is theta says, theta says uh, where are the peaks? What R tells me is, is how sharp is the peak? How sharp are the peaks? And so I can see, like in this first column, as I keep theta fixed at pi over 3, but move down the different rows, the, the, the values are getting sharper and sharper. In this case, because I'm holding the denominator fixed, they're also getting taller and taller. But you can't always necessarily rely on that as I compare different systems uh, without knowing for sure what the denominator is. So a better clue isn't necessarily how overall tall they are, because I can always make something taller or shorter by applying a gain, but rather how sharp the peak is, which is to say, how quickly do I go from the peak value to something that's maybe halfway down, or, or we often say what's a 1 over root 2 down, so 0.7 down. So in this case, going from like 6 to something around 4.2 would be much faster uh, than this one would go from, from uh, 2.5 I would need to go much further to get down to something that's around one and a half here. And in this case, they're very wide indeed because R is very small. So again, as our, the, the takeaway from this is as R gets closer to one, I get sharper peaks, which are the location of those peaks are set by theta. All right, so as I look in the frequency domain and know uh, where I want to have, if, if I was looking for a very simple bandpass filter, rather than make a complicated higher order system, if all I need is a little bit of bandpass or resonance, uh, I can do that with a second order system where I can choose my theta to give me the pass band for that bandpass I want, and then my R will tell me how tight or equivalently what the Q is if you're used to thinking of that, the resonance factor from continuous time systems. Okay, so that's our example on second order systems, uh, on the frequency response of second order systems. Uh, so I'll stop here and I'll see you next time.